Good morning. morning. It's my joy to be with you. Uh, As always, I enjoy attending the temple and the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Duke, for asking me to speak today. I have a question for you. And if you know the answer, raise your hand. Who conquered Greece after the downfall of Athens? Who conquered Greece after the downfall of Athens? I know the answer. (laughs) It's Philip of Macedonia. And the reason I know that is it's the one question I missed in the sixth grade on a test of a hundred (laughs) questions. The one question I missed. Can I tell you anything about the 99 that I got right? Nope. Can I tell you much about Greece? and its history, and the Roman Empire, and all that we studied? Not really, but I remember that one question. Who was Philip of Macedonia? I can't even tell you that, (laughs) but I know the answer to that one question. Do you know, I have been reading a book. Uh, I love to read, I read a lot, and my latest book is called A Failure of Nerve by Edwin Freeman. And he says that we are living in a society that is emotionally regressed. Emotionally regressed. That we are in such a state of heightened anxiety, chronic heightened anxiety, that we are frantically running around looking for more information, looking for more techniques, looking for more data, that will help us feel secure, that will help us feel as if we have the answers we need to live by. So many of the questions we ask, we we ask for the purpose of receiving validation and a sense of security. You know, as a child in elementary school, I loved questions because they were like a game for me, and I loved to have the answer. So when the teacher would ask a question, here's little Donna Johnson, and I'm not kidding you, I would throw up my hand, I'd throw up my hand, and she wouldn't call on me. And so I would, I'd get down out of my seat a little bit, and I'd throw up my hand a little more and wait, but she wouldn't call on me. I'd literally be down on one knee in the aisle (laughs) with my arm raised. I wanted so much to respond and to play the game of what if and who did and whatever. All those questions helped me to mature, or did they? There's a whole underlying curriculum of our life, and it has nothing to do with the questions about data and information. It has very little to do with the who, what, where, and when. One of my big questions that I asked until I was in my mid-40s is, who am I going to be when I grow up? I tried all kinds of things. I have a degree in psychology. I was a counselor and a psychologist for a while. And then I decided, no, 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 I, I need to do something totally artistic. So I became a stained glass artist for years. Uh, did windows like this and installed them. So I did that for a while, and, and then I had an opportunity to become a journalist, and I thought, wow, wouldn't that be cool? And it was cool. I met a lot of people, and I learned to ask a lot of questions. The who, what, when, and where. But that last question of how, how did something happen, caused me to think in a different way. You know, we are wired to ask questions. Every time we ask a question, there's a chemical process that goes on in our brain. If we ask a question that we truly don't know the answer to, the brain will begin to respond differently, and there will be neural pathways that are created and that open up as we begin to grapple with the question. But most of us just keep asking the same question over and over and over again, looking for a different answer. 
And the reason we do that is we're thinking a different answer will lower our anxiety, will suddenly improve the quality of our lives, where the real answer to that dilemma lies in selecting a new question, a question that allows us to grow. You know, I've been told that attorneys, good attorneys, will never ask a question that they don't already know the answer to. So we can be attorneys in our lives. We can keep asking the same questions that give the same answers, that validate the same experience that we've always had. Or we can just stand in the space of not knowing and suddenly allow ourselves to be a little vulnerable to life. Because if we are willing to stand in the space of the unanswered question, we invite life to reveal the answer to us. And life, more than likely, is not ever going to give us a concrete yes or no. And rarely have I asked the universe a question and gotten an immediate response. The process for me is more ask and then ask and then ask and wait and wait and wait. But as I am waiting, something is going on inside of me that perhaps I can't see the evidence of externally, but I know that it is happening in me. And I am maturing. I am gaining wisdom. My life is evolving. And my world is expanding. And I am becoming more and more at peace with what is rather than battling what was or clutching for what I want it to be in the future. I can just breathe in this moment and know that my questions are being answered at the right time and in the right way. The questions that we ask have qualities. And usually behind every single question that we ask, there's already an assumed answer just like attorneys, there's an assumed answer. There's a predisposition toward receiving a certain answer. I was in the kitchen one time cooking up something and my little grandson years ago walked in and he said, Nana, I can't have a cookie, can I? <laughs> Made it so easy to say, that's right, the answer is no, <laughs> which only confused him. We do bring our assumptions into the question. And the more we can begin to see the erroneous assumptions that we are carrying, the more we can ask a question and really receive the true answer. So I heard a little joke I'll share with you. It's an Irish joke. Two women meet each other on the street. There's Mrs. Mulraney and Mrs. Muldoon. And Mrs. Muldoon's husband had just passed, and Mrs. Mulraney said, oh, so sorry to hear about your dear one passing. And she says, well, thank you for that. It, it was really so unnecessary. And Mrs. Mulraney said, really? How is that? And she said, well, I was down in the kitchen cooking breakfast, and at 8 o'clock I called him. And by nine o'clock, he hadn't come down. And I went upstairs and I looked and there he was. He was dead in the bed. If he had only come at eight o'clock when I called him. <laughs> we make assumptions <laughs> about life and then we carry out our life as if those assumptions were true, as if they're even logical. I think the beginning of wisdom is knowing that you don't really know. You know, just like I was as a child, I want to fill in the blank. I want to give my best hypothesis. And if somebody says good answer, then I will take that to be the truth. But here's a question for you. Is it? 
Is it the truth? As we move through our lives, we shed our assumptions and we pick up new ones. As we look at the questions that we ask, always remember to look at the assumption behind it before you ask the question. Sometimes in frustration, I can just stomp my foot and say, what is wrong with me? And I remember uh, one of my childhood friends, we used to joke and she, I would say, what kind of fool am I? And she'd say, well, I don't know, how many kinds are there? You know, let's, let's choose a variety. But when we begin to ask those self-reflective questions, those questions that invite the beautiful spirit into our lives, sometimes we might hear an answer. Sometimes we might feel it as a knowing in our body. But oftentimes, it's life itself that begins to reveal the answer. We want to keep our brains evolving. So rather than asking the same question over and over again, ask a new question. Ask a new question. Rather than, who is responsible for this? What difference does that make? I mean, if you know that, Alice in Wonderland is responsible. Does that change anything? A question with an answer that changes is more apt to be, so here we are, where do we go from here? And how can I be a part of a solution? How can I bring my gifts to the table? How can I show up in the world in a way that invites people in? so that what we experience impacts us. How can I open up? How can I stand in the space of not knowing in my own insecurities and my vulnerabilities and still be comfortable? How can I do that? See, these how questions invite the deeper insights. Why questions sure are fun. It's great to find answers to the why questions, but they'll never be facts. That's a guessing game we play with ourselves. They too allow our brains to kind of evolve in a certain way, but those why questions aren't always productive. I have found the how questions. How am I going to be today? How am I going to show up? often sets the course of my day. And then, you know what? Life brings me lots of surprises. I was just sharing with Duke that I was, uh, yesterday I was in Napa Valley. Um, I was in a conference at Walnut Creek the day before and it ended and I, by one o'clock and I wasn't scheduled to fly out of Oakland until two o'clock the very next day. And then the next thing I heard is Bart went on strike. Well, there went my transportation. So a friend of mine said, you know what? My husband is in Mexico. I live in Napa. Why don't you check out of the hotel and come and stay with me for the night? Look what life brought me. Okay, I think I'll do that. <laughs> she says, no, you must have a winery experience. Okay, I think I'll do that. So we had a nice lunch in an Italian restaurant, and then we went out, and I had some Napa Valley champagne, except you can't call it champagne, you know, it's sparkling wine. And then she showed me her grocery store, which was um, very nice. And uh, from there, we went home, had a great dinner, sat in the hot tub and laughed and talked, got up the next morning, took a walk through the wineries, saw all of these hot air balloons landing in the field where we were walking. Can you imagine this? A moon this big in the sky that morning. I just think this is magical. So how am I going to be? I decided that morning I am going to be open and receptive to what life brings to me. And look what showed up. How are you going to be with your life? 
Duke has given us some great questions on the front of your bulletin, your program. Questions for reflection. These are questions that will allow your brain to go in a different direction, that will allow an opening for spirit to begin to show you what you didn't know that you didn't know. You don't have to go looking for answers to history questions, answers to technology questions. You just need to be willing, in my humble opinion, to stand in the space and ask the question, here am I, how am I going to show up? Who am I going to be today? The self I think I am or the self I am? It's always full of surprises. A whole lot more fun than the self I think I am. I love it when I can get outside of me. So I have a question for you. Can you live in the question and not seek an answer? Can you live in the question? Don't answer that. <laughs> Let's now open ourselves to receive those answers from spirit because answers do come. And when they come, they come as a knowing, as a knowing. And those are the answers you never forget. we call life and all of the surprises that have come our way all of the beautiful wonderful people who have just shown up please know that on some level you invited them into your life and the divine spirit that is the one spirit within all people said yes. Spirit's answer to us is always yes, always yes. So what do you want in your life? And when that answer comes, ask this question. What do I want in my life? And when that answer comes, ask this question. What do I want in my life? For the more we sit with the question, the more we continue to pursue the higher truths and the deeper knowings. The windows of heaven begin to open within our minds and hearts and souls and new answers come. Who do you want to be today? Who do you want to be today? And how are you going to be that? What are you going to give to this day? And what are you willing to receive? All answers are given by God in this moment. 
and they are good and very good. So let us just sit in the silence now, open and receptive to this living presence whose vibration is pure love. The wisdom of the ages revealing to us right now exactly what we need to know. Someone once said, we don't get what we affirm, we get what we expect. Let us this day ask for what we truly want and expect that what we will receive will far exceed our expectations. We surrender our need to know. And just live in the knowing that all things are being provided at the right time and in the right way. The universe delights in expressing through us and allowing us to see our ability to create greater dimensions of beauty, to touch one another in meaningful relationships, to put together the world in such a way that the meaning brings warmth to our lives. All of this is given now.
Thank you, sweet spirit. We go forth this day to be the light that you have called us to be, the light of the world. We are blessed. We are grateful. And we expect this day to be nothing less than miraculous. This is our prayer and our decree, and so it is. And so we let it be. Amen. God's love is deep within me. Ever satisfying my soul, God's love is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul, ever satisfying.